You got your Mac and Mac guys. John McMullen and Jody McDonald here with you for a full two hours of Birds 365 today. And we got plenty to chop up because they chopped it up yesterday in Orlando with Nick Sirianni talking to the media. And a little later in the day, Jeffrey Laurie talking to the media, two of the major movers and shakers when it comes to the football team that we talk about every single day. Um, shoot, Seriani was on while we were on. Uh, you couldn't schedule around that. Thank you very much, NFL. You couldn't. Yeah. You wait. Well, you wait coaches, to... coaches' breakfast is scheduled every year, so I guess we can't uh, complain about that. On the on the day that we'd actually be okay with breaking Eagle news, waiting till ten o'clock. No, let's do it at eight o'clock, just as Mac. Seven forty-five. Actually, they get the jump start. Seven. That's true. There were a couple of quotes out there before we ever hit the airwaves yesterday. So yeah, they did it early with Sirianni. Later in the day with uh, Jeff Laurie. So let me start today's conversation with this: Who did you either learn more from yesterday, because how he was the day before Sirianni and Jeff Laurie yesterday? Or who said something that most grabbed your attention yesterday, either the head coach or the owner of the Philadelphia Eagles? Uh, I, I would say Jeffrey. I mean, in these circumstances, I say all the time, whether it's Jeffrey, uh, uh, even more so than Howie, but with Howie and Nick, uh, Howie's always the more important one because we don't get to talk to him as much. Um, and, and with Jeffrey, even more so, it becomes, you know, because – Sometimes he only talks once, uh, sometimes twice a year. Uh, he's not Jerry Jones, to say the least. Uh, so, um, you know, I'm disappointed I wasn't there for him. Um, and you always get more. And obviously, he's the one guy who can speak freely if he wants to speak freely. Everybody else has to watch their P's and Q's. They're employees. He can say whatever the hell he wants. He can tell the truth. But, but, but he's very political. Uh, obviously, you know, he's not going out there and, and giving up all what he calls proprietary information, which I kind of chuckled at. Um, so it's always Jeffrey. Yeah. But Nick was on, on competitive advantage mode, which I, I find it ironically because he, he wouldn't confirm Cam Jurgens was the starting center. So Bob Groats is back into it, our buddy back in. <laughs> uh, but he did confirm it the day before to Tom Pelissero. Right. I mean, come on, Nick. What? What? what, what maybe there's what, maybe what, there's what, just what, one. Maybe there's just one guy in your crew that he doesn't want to give information to. If he said what, it could be, could have been Chris Franklin because I saw the picture. He was sitting right next to him. Yeah. He had the catbird seat. Chris Maybe he doesn't there. want to tell Franklin anything. Chris got there early. Who was on the other side? I forget. Uh, you know, uh, Brooks. Brooks Cabina, our buddy from the Athletic. Yeah, you got to get there early to get the. Uh, so you got to be an early riser to get uh, competitive advantage nonsense from Nick Ferriano. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's funny. And you said about uh, Jeffrey is the most. Uh, important because he doesn't report to anybody. He's the owner. His name is at the top of the masthead. But I will say this, and Howie spoke the day before. I would say Howie, of those individuals who spoke at the meetings the last two days, whose name isn't at the top of the masthead, who aren't an owner, he might have more flexibility to say something than anybody else. Because we continually say he is basically got a job for life that he is so entwined with Jeff Laurie. Yeah. I don't believe that by the way. I've never believed that. Um, he's really? got, you haven't said that to me right here on Bird Street. Oh, yeah, I said that before he's got more rope than anybody. Well, that's you what know? I mean. He's got but, more rope than anybody else other than the 32 owners and or CEOs. Cause yeah. And then I say that's, he that's would be one number his... one of anyone who's not an owner of the ability to say something and not be worried for his job. That's one of the, uh, but I won't go that extra step. I, I say all the time, that's one of his biggest advantages as yeah. his other uh, over other GMs. He, he, he doesn't have to GM for his job, so to speak. Those guys have to GM for their jobs mm -hmm. uh, and they turn it over. But uh, I won't go the step far that he's got a lifetime job. That's all I'm saying. He's done it before. He was that close with Joe Banner at one point and he moved on from Joe Banner. He, he already demoted how he wants. He didn't technically demote him because he gave him a raise and a new title. But from Howie's perspective, he was certainly demoted because that's the part of the job how he enjoys and wants the most, the personnel aspect, and he took that away from him. 
So that's a demotion, no matter how you want to spin it. So he's done it in the past, and if things go horribly wrong, I'm not going to say he's got a lifetime job. And then the fact that Jeffrey's 72 and Julian's going to take over. That's why, when, the, when the name at the top of the mess head changes, then yeah. all bets are off. Yeah, so lifetime is so where... Here's, here's where I'll say, how he's got a lifetime job with Jeff Laurie as the owner. I, I don't think Howie Roseman can or will be fired while Jeff Laurie is still running. I job. would, I would, I, I'm in the 90s percent. I okay. agree with, but I'm not going to go 100. I'm, I'm 99. I'm, 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 I'm well, I'm well over nine, probably 95 percent. But there, there's a little sliver uh, of, you know, potential. Yeah. You know, if they have three consecutive terrible seasons, which I don't think is going to happen because I think Howie's very good at his job. I don't right. think how he should be fired. I think he's very good at his job. So but and I, 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 I can't go that extra step. Fair enough. Like I'm, I'm a little further down the line than you, but we're close. Um, and I was a guy who, when the season ended and there was a good percentage of Eagle fans, both here on our stream on Birds 365, WIP phone lines, uh, wherever Eagle opinions are generated, Thought that Nick Sirianni needed to talk, talk about a uh, life job for a lifetime. Nick Sirianni's life could have ended at any minute because the Eagle fans wanted to run him out of town on a rail. I was one who said, no, I think there's a good chance Jeffrey's going to save his job. That they'll try and thread the needle here. They'll make changes. But Jeff just might look at the big picture and say, well, let's look at from the day we hired Nick Sirianni to the day we're having a conversation as to whether we're going to keep him or not. And the big picture looked pretty good. And Jeff expanded on that yesterday, uh, throwing out numbers 31 7. Extraordinary, by the way. I'm glad you brought that up. Extraordinary is what he called 31 and 7. Yes. And by the way, he's right. Exactly. Uh, it, is, it is extraordinary. Um, but. You know, I, I looked at that quote a little bit differently because he, he said, um, we got to get better than that. We got to get back to that. And not only do we have to get back to that, we got to get better than that. And I right. think that's unrealistic. Because they so, didn't win the Super Bowl, meaning they got to win a Super Bowl because they came as close as you can to winning a Super Bowl without winning a Super Bowl. So that's where the better comes in. Um, I, I understood where Jeffrey was coming from. And I actually even endorsed uh, Sirianni keeping his job. After listening to Sirianni yesterday, I'm less confident in my stance. Um, I was not impressed by Nick Sirianni. I'm actually kind of worried about Nick Sirianni in certain aspects. And the biggest one for me, Johnny Mac, is coaching hiring. Now, this has been a bugaboo for the Eagles basically since they won that Super Bowl in 2017. Because when Doug Peterson was hired, he was like, yeah, whoever you want to give me as a coach, shall we? As a coaching staff, go ahead, knock yourself out. I'm the head coach. That's the only thing that I'm worried about. And over time, as he won, he became more possessive of his coaching staff and putting his foot down about his coaching staff, and it actually cost him his job. So they move on from Doug, and they hire Sirianni, and Sirianni had, for me, much more say in putting his initial coaching staff together than Doug ever had on any of his staffs. And he specifically said yesterday, I hired Kellen Moore. Not we hired Kellen Moore. I hired Kellen Moore. Yeah. So let's do a quick check of uh, Nick Sirianni and his coaching hirings since he became the head coach of the Eagles. As per John McMullen, and I lean on you for this because I didn't know this, the Eagles hired their defensive coordinator before they ever hired the head coach. That they were no, locked I, in on I, Gannon I, I, before I, they I, hired Sirianni. I, because I've gotten pushback on this. They didn't hire him. They, they made it known that they were going to hire him. So... Uh, Under, you know, that, it's semantics, but uh, uh, I want to make that might, It might be more than semantics, but I think you're, the bottom line is I think your point is on, and I trust your point, and I think you're accurate. If if Josh McDaniels had been the Eagles defense, uh, head coach, Jonathan he would have been Gannon his defensive been coordinator. The defensive coordinator, yes. Exactly. So that tells me what I need to know there. So it wasn't, even though Sirianni and Gannon knew each other, I don't believe that was Sirianni's hire. That was, I believe that was an Eagle hire. So he gets credit for Shane Steichen. I certainly give him credit for that. And since then, he hired Sean Desai, 
who was so bad that he needed to be replaced in season in a panic move. That was a Sirianni hire. He elevated Brian Johnson, who was so questionable, was fired after just one year. Why are we? And let me add Denard Wilson to that group, too, because he could have hired Denard Wilson rather than hire Sean Desai. He decided no. And then depending on who you talk to, Denard Wilson would have stuck around and coached the DBs again. And he said, no, I think that's a bad fit. Uh, I wish you well. Best of luck getting a job somewhere else. And basically pushed him out the door. Wilson goes down, helps the Ravens uh, win the most games in the AFC. Now he's a defensive quarter in Tennessee. And Sirianni said, yeah, no, no. Thanks, Nard. Thanks for the memory. Um, wh why are we entrusting hiring coordinators, important coaching positions to Nick Sirianni on what his track record is since he got here? Um, well, hey, I don't think the track record is, is as bad as, uh, I don't know, some people may think. Um, well, I just I ran think... down three pretty big flops for me. You want to defend Nick Sirianni's coaching hiring? Have at it. Well, number one, I would say Gannon, I, you know, it, Gannon's sort of in the middle, very similar to Vic Mangio, because everybody was on board with Gannon. It wasn't like uh, the Eagles said, oh, you have to hire Jonathan Gannon, and Nick Sirianni had a problem with it. Those two were very close. It just happened to work out. It was a coincidence, basically, that they moved on um, and said, um, you know, Jeffrey, I think very – <laughs> one of one of his best moves was like, no, we're not going to go with Josh McDaniels. I don't think that's going to work out long term. We're going to keep interviewing. And it just happened to work out that they liked Nick Sirianni, who worked with Jonathan Gannon in the past and liked Jonathan Gannon. So that's sort of like half and half, very similar to Vic Fangio now Agreed. because everybody wanted Vic Fangio. But Nick wanted him. Jeffrey wanted him. Uh, Howie want Everybody wanted uh, Vic Fangio to be the defensive coordinator. So – I don't know. I a I would say. Um, so we're talking about Sean Desai, and we're talking about essentially Brian Johnson, who failed. And by the way, Jeffrey does it very nicely. Very, um, you know, he's got the suit on. Uh, he's very political. He's he's very, but he buried the coordinators yesterday. He buried the coordinators. Now a lot of people say he should have. You know, they they fired him. Now the assumption that. We all say, did was it Nick's idea or was it Jeffrey's idea that he had to move on? And by the way, defensively, everybody was on board. Now, if you put true serum on, on Nick Sirianni, I do believe he would have liked to have kept Brian Johnson. I do believe that out of loyalty and a, a bunch of other things and, and closeness. I do believe that. But I also believe... He can read the room, and whether you want to call it political, whether you want to call it conformity, whether he went into the room and said, I got to change coordinators, or Jeffrey said, you got to change coordinators. He knew when he stepped into that room, he can read the room. He's got political savvy, and I'm talking about Nick Sirianni. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the reference of, Oh, I didn't bring it up, but I was on board with it. I'll look up the exact quote. Jeffrey said, no, I didn't. It was all Nick's idea, but I I was completely behind it. Um, he knew if he wanted to be the Philadelphia Eagles head coach, I'm talking about Nick Sirianni, in 2024, he had to change both coordinators. Again, defensively, it wasn't a problem at that point. It was Matt Patricia. Um uh, so we're only talking about one guy, Brian Johnson. And, you know, whether that's good or bad, you can discuss. I would say understanding being able to read a room is probably a good thing um, if you're a if you're a head coach, which is a management position. But he buried the coordinators. And he also made a big deal about the experience of Vic Banjo and Kellen Moore, which I get because you're coming off um, – Two failures, Brian Johnson, first-time coordinator, Sean Desai had one year, wasn't successful in Chicago. Well, guess what? Shane Steichen had one year, wasn't that successful with the Chargers. Jonathan Gannon was the first-time deep, uh, defensive coordinator. That worked out pretty stinking well. So, you know, this, this, the scapegoating was there. 
as I expected it to be. It existed. It needed to be done. And the only question was, was Jet, was Nick Sirianni going to go along with it? So to me, it's not a matter of, was it explicitly ordered or Nick had, as I said, the political savvy to understand it. So all of these hires are, uh, whether you want to call it conformity, whatever, but the one guy, and what that's why he's the most important, that can veto it, as you've seen in the past with Mike Rowe and Press Taylor and Matt Burke and Corey Unlin, the one guy who can veto anything is Jeffrey Lurie. And Jeffrey Lurie's like everybody else. He's a very good owner. But this is, and when he talked about Nick's job security, he he said every coach is in a high pressure situation. You know, he would not say, "Oh no, he's not." You know, he, no problems whatsoever. Every coach, and he's right. You know, Bum Phillips is old quote. There's two kinds of coaches: them that's fired and them that's going to be fired. That that that's it. Um, it, it happens to everybody. Everybody's got a shelf life. So that's no surprise, but he's a lame duck. And from what I look at, and I talk about that 31 and seven extraordinary quote, he's in the same position. We were talked a lot about Saquon yesterday about, well, there are no more excuses. You can say that about a bunch of players, Jalen Hurts, Saquon Barkley on the offensive side of the ball. You can talk about it with Nick Sirianni. Jeffrey Lurie essentially said there are no excuses. you got great coordinators now. The coordinators were to blame. Now you got, he's not Greek, as Mark Barzetta pointed out, but that's my explicit, the mythical Greek god of defense, Vic Fangio. And you have Kellen Moore with the new ideas and the fresh ideas, and he's going to get Saquon and Barkley involved, and he's a weapon, and you already got A.J. Brown, and you already got all this talent. Woo! Yeah. But Good here, luck. Here's Good luck. Up. Uh, you used the word great. I don't know that they got great coordinators. They have improved coordinators. Over what they had last year, they definitely upgraded. Was the Miami Dolphin defense great this year? No. It was good and much like with Dio, improved. Um, were the Chargers great on offense this past year? No. I don't know that I would use the word great, great, new great coordinators for either of the two guys Eagles hired. Improved, absolutely. And they had to be improved, and they are improved, and I expect them to be improved. And, yeah, maybe even they'll stamp themselves as great. They're not great yet. That that needs to be played out over the 2024 season. And just uh, maybe I need to ask it for you as a question. What is your evaluation of Nick Sirianni as a coaching evaluator? making hirings for his staff. Since Nick Sirianni got here, he was either the man or a heavily involved uh, guy in the decision-making. What do you look at Nick Sirianni as, as a coaching evaluator and hirer? I, I think he's above average. Really? I, I, I think that I think he first, sucks. I think that first staff proved to be a very good staff. And I think a lot of people, um, looked at it at the time, including myself, and said, where's the experience? Um, I know I, I talked about that a lot. And, hey, who guess the, what? Who the good, uh, Gannon? Gannon? Steichen? We, we all agree. Clay? <laughs> was, a, was a group hiring. And if you're going to put him in order, Sirianni was probably third out of the three who said, let's get Jonathan Gannon in here. Steichen, he absolutely gets credit for it. That's a home run. No questions asked. Stoutland was already here. Who else from that staff really was a major contributor to that team going to the Super Bowl? Well, I'd look at it um, a couple different ways when it comes to coaches because we can't judge them. We don't have stats like we do for players. And even that, uh, you, even it's that, you got to more to use yeah. the John McMullen word esoteric, yes. which I like. It's so, very true. But that's what I'm asking you to do. Get esoteric on me and tell me how you well, think that's he's why I, I And that's why I say he's above average because I think that first staff was very good because part of your job as a head coach, and Jeffrey got into this a little bit, I really do think there's so much management point of it that people don't understand. Um, it's far bigger than X and O's. And those people talk, well, you got to call the plays. You got That's a very small part of it. It's a very big job. Um, and one of the things the Eagles 
as they tend to do as they kick Doug Peterson in the ass out the door was spin that he didn't coach his coach as well. So part of it is you, you got to coach your coaches and you got to get them up to speed. You know, there's a number of guys, Jeffrey made a slip about Michael clay who's turned into, you know, a beaming example of ironically patience in a year. They didn't have patience with other young coaches. Um, and he just did a really good job. It's a wonder how personnel helps with that. Uh, but he used the term inherited when he talked about Michael Clay. He didn't inherit Michael Clay. Michael Clay was in San Francisco. Uh, Michael Clay came back. Michael Clay was in Philadelphia as the assistant special teams coach uh, with Chip Kelly. And then he followed Chip Kelly um, to San Francisco. And then he returned to Philadelphia right. in 2021, Nick Sirianni's first season. He didn't inherit Michael Clay. So what did that tell me? That told me he also didn't hire Michael Clay. Because Jeffrey, you know, mixed it up. Right. But, you know, that wasn't, that was, that a, was that given was to how, him. That was a Howie hire. Yeah, that was, that was given. That, that was given to him. And that's Agreed. turned out and to be. Outland was given to him. And the better coaches, I think, were given to him. The ones that Nick has picked, other than Steichen. And like I said, Steichen, major good hire. That's a that's a bases clearing double up in the gap, driving in three runs. I think he took a lot of swing and misses on the other ones that I think were his hires, of which yesterday he took credit for Kellen Moore. That wasn't a we hired Kellen Moore. I hired Kellen Moore. When he said that, that jumped out to me, Johnny Mac. And well, it, that, it, it, uh, I'll tell you why it didn't jump out, and we got to get to Mike Gill. Didn't, he always says, I hired, I hired, I hired. So we all, do we believe it, number one? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, when it was fired, I'm, I'm, I think I was one of the first. I believe Nick. I believe Nick demoted Sean Desai. I've said that from, and I, I, I think that's a viable offense, ironically. Um you know, I believe him because of certain things that, that I know. So there's some I don't know, you know, um, Michael Clay. How did Michael Clay come into existence? Well, I know he didn't inherit him because he wasn't here. Uh, Brian Johnson. Now, of a sudden, Brian Johnson's a Nick Sirianni guy. Well, Brian Johnson wasn't a Nick Sirianni guy when they hired him. Right. When he came um, in the building, he came in as a Howie guy. Yeah. But when you get promoted – from quarterback coach to offense quarter, we were led to believe that was Nick's call. He hired his offense quarter. He chose Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson was handed to him on a silver platter, but he had the final say on that. Do you not agree mm. with that? No, that one's a little political. I've used that term a couple times. Look, I don't know. I think if we're up to Nick Sirianni, Kevin Petullo would have been the offensive quarter. Really? That's my assumption. Now, that that's not... Kevin's job might be too big to maybe he, he doesn't want him to be the offensive coordinator. Kevin's got a big job, Kevin Petulo. He's the close. I've said this for me. He's the closest coach to Nick Sirianni, even closer than Shane Steichen. He's the closest one. Um, he does a lot of crap for Nick Sirianni. That that but so maybe he's too valuable to be the coordinator in his position. Okay, but I think he's the guy that he you know trusts the most. Um, and certainly from an he's an offensive guy, passing game coordinator, associate head coach. Um, he would have been the head coach when Nick was sick with COVID. If people remember, he even did a presser. He was going to yeah. coach the team, not Shane Steichen, not Jonathan Gannon. Kevin Petula was going to coach the team. Um, so I, I, I would say the, the political part of it, I'm talking about Jeffrey Lurie, love Brian Johnson, might want to distance himself now. Howie Roseman, love Brian Johnson, might want to distance himself now. Not might, they both did. Yeah. Um, Jalen Hurts, love Brian Johnson, which was a big part of it, obviously. And I'm not saying Nick didn't, but just that Nick is very close to Kevin. And, oh, by the way, might be a good thing that he didn't go back down that road again with Petulo. When you're pushing Brian Johnson out the door and you're not on the steadiest of footing, you might not want to say, see, I, I kind of told you guys Petulo would have been better. 
smart. Nick, it, Nick it does have the ability to read the room, as you said. He's McMullen. I'm McDonald. Mac and Mac, Birds 365. Well, what do you know? It's early Wednesday. Mike Gill's not in Clearwater. He's here with us on Birds 365.